Uh, good evening, everyone, or uh, good afternoon, or even good morning, if you're in Asia or uh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, good to see quite a few people here. Got already 76 viewers. I have started a little early because I see there's a lot of you around. Uh, the title of the live stream is uh, Currency Collapses, The Way Countries Go Bankrupt. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll go over that a little bit. But uh, I think uh, you guys probably have a lot of questions. We'll, we'll just do that as well. Take, take your question as, as many as possible. Uh, so we've got, I saw Padenda, Johnson's here. Hi, Padenda. MM No is here. Yeah, Billy is here as well. Uh, Warren Buffett uh, and Gold. Well, yeah, Warren Buffett, uh, it came out uh, on Friday after the market closed that he uh, bought, uh, well, they his company bought uh, Barrick Gold, one of the biggest, second biggest uh, gold miner in the world. They bought uh, about half a billion worth in the second quarter. So, yeah, that is significant. That is significant. But uh, again, to the subject of uh, currency collapse, some people think that uh, countries uh, can't go broke, but they can. And, uh, of course, the United States has been has had the uh, privilege of being able to uh, have the – world reserve currency since 1944, 45 or thereabouts, mainly because the U.S. had a lot of gold uh, that it accumulated since World War I, really. The U.S. started accumulating a lot of gold because it prov provided all the uh, a lot of the ammunition, all the materi material or materiel <laughs> for World War I to the Europeans and then the same thing for World War II. So at the end of World War II, the U.S. had something like uh, two-thirds of the world's gold. So the dollar was as good as gold. So it, it's taken a long time. But I, I think uh, the dollar, of course, is not – it's still – it's only as, as good as one two-thousandth of an ounce of gold. So it's becoming more and more worthless uh, back in '44, it was one thirty-fifth of an ounce, and I would I will say it's going to become a lot uh, more worthless in the next few months and years ahead, especially because we're seeing a lot of money printing, a lot of debt creation, and I have a book here. Uh, one of the reasons I've uh, the title of my video is about uh, fiat currencies and uh, or fiat currency collapse being the way countries declare bankruptcy or go bankrupt is because of this book by uh, Ralph T. Foster, Fiat Paper Money, uh, The History and the Evolution of Our Currency. So uh, this has got a list of all the, the countries and all their currencies, and I'll go through that in a minute. Just see who's here. Uh, see if I can uh, see any questions. JM, what do you think vaulting precious metals in other countries like Singapore, I think it's a bad idea <laughs> nowadays. Maybe two years ago, it seemed like it made more sense. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I think you should try to vault it as close to you as possible, especially with what's going on with travel around the world. I was watching yesterday on Library, uh, RBRY, because I post my videos there, someone uh, downloaded loads of uh, gold rush programs. Uh, they they downloaded a, a program about the treasures of World War II in the Philippines. And they talked about how a lot of the Europeans back uh, during uh, World, War I, World War II, before World War II and during World War II, they sent a lot of their uh, treasures and wealth to Asia because they, they thought, it would be safe over there. Hitler wouldn't get there, but the Japanese did. And the Japanese uh, invaded Singapore uh, and conquered Singapore from the British. I'm not saying they're going to do that again, but I'd rather keep it as close as possible. I don't think it's a good idea with what's going on. DMC paper money is 
a nursery of tyranny, corruption, and delusions. I agree. It, it gives uh, politicians and bankers uh, control of the uh, nation. Pabar, do you think people will be able to buy land for gold in the future? I think you could do that right now. Uh, I think it was, and I'm not saying I am pro-Trump or anything, but he uh, did a deal uh, years ago, um, real estate deal, and he accepted gold bars. There's nothing that says you can't. If someone uh, came to me and uh, said, oh, I want to buy a watch, I'll give you... Uh, I don't know, five ounces of gold. And it, I, I would take it. Of course, I don't want to sell my watch, but I would take it. So, yeah, if I had land and uh, I wanted to sell some, if I had 100 acres somewhere, someone said, oh, I'm going to buy 10 acres, I would take uh, gold for it. You just have to uh, pass the title, I guess, the legal deal. You know, um, that's what... Uh, you just have to make sure it's done legally. Uh, Pat, what do you expect out of the Fed meeting? Notes releases on Wednesday. How will it affect metals? Do you mean that? Uh, do you mean the minutes of the last meeting? Yeah, sometimes it has, has a small impact. Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't think it will have much. It could. Let's have a look here at the countries. So here it is uh, in the front of the page. It's got all the countries and the currencies. Uh, and it's also uh, on the back here on the back <laughs> so uh mr man i used to skip over your videos but now i have seen how new and precise your videos are on point i understand also how incisive your knowledge is well done keep it up well th uh, thank you for that uh, mr man Yeah, Chris R., I, I agree the system is imploding. I, I think people need to be out of paper, out of the financial system as much as possible. Helton, do you feel every time you mention something on your channel and, and then Schiff parrots it in his show the same week every time? Last one was gold, has the money utility, and not much else. I haven't noticed that, <laughs> that he's parroting my channel, uh, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I've been following him, I think, since around 07 when he started showing up on CNBC. But uh, I don't know. I don't really follow too much uh, his uh, shift radio. I think uh, I don't watch him very often. I saw he made a video uh, yesterday about uh, Buffett. After I, I, I made a video about Buffett yesterday morning because I thought it was important. And I got a lot of views from that video. And I saw he made another one. Uh, he made one about that. I can't say if he, you know, watched my and parroted it. I think it was quite uh, significant, the news. Uh, Victor Claudio, the lack of fundamentals uh, pushed Buffett into gold. Well, I think he realizes as well the uh, U.S. government, the the Federal Reserve, they've gone crazy uh, with the uh, debt creation, and they've got a lot of cash. Berkshire Hathaway, I think, uh, a few hundred billion, or maybe a little less, a hundred and thirty or something like that. So they need to uh, hedge that exposure, I think, but. More importantly is the, the fact that he's getting out of the bank uh, banking uh, stocks. He got out totally out of Goldman Sachs. He got out partly out of J.P. Morgan, but I think he's probably going to get out of that as well. Bank of America or what Wachovia, I'm not sure if he's, or Wells Fargo. So he's not too comfortable about the financial system. 
because if he was, he wouldn't be getting out of Goldman Sachs. Uh, remember that he bought $5 billion worth of Goldman Sachs stock right, right after, well, during the crisis of 08 uh, as a vote of confidence in the system. Of course, he got a nod from the government saying they're going to help the banks. But now that he's getting out, it, it shows to me that he has very little confidence in the system. And uh, the fact that he's bought uh, into Barrett Gold is uh, significant, I think. Uh, Victor Claudio, I think uh, if you read uh, really carefully what he says, he doesn't see gold as an investment, like a productive asset. And I agree with him because gold is money. So as an investor, he, he, he yeah, he doesn't care uh, about money uh, un unless he has to hold it because he doesn't see anything safe to invest. But uh, I don't think he sees much value in cash either. Did any of the banks pay back the bailout money of 08 with interest on top? Um, I think a lot of them did because um, a lot of banks were forced to take on loans, uh, like in the U.S. So I'm not sure if there was interest on top. But, um, yeah, the, the, the thing as well was... Um, it's more uh, nuanced than that. The fact that they bailed out AIG with $165 billion, that wasn't paid back, I don't think. But if they hadn't bailed out a AIG, the U.S. Treasury, the whole uh, of Wall Street would have gone under. It would have been a house of cards. So uh, let's have a look here. So we got... Abkhazia, Abkhazia, that's the first country on the list. Uh, Rubo, Afghanistan, Rupi, Afghani, Albania, Dinar, Franca, Franga, Lek, Lek, Valuta. So Albania's had a lot of currencies. Algeria, the Franc, Andorra, Pezeta, Angola, Ray, Centavo, Escudo. So, I mean, then you go here, Egypt, Piastri, the Pound. You've got uh, Cuba. Centavo, Peso, Czechoslovakia, Corona. I mean, it's a whole list here of uh, countries that basically have gone bankrupt. And by the way, the uh, this uh, book or research, I think it was written in 2009, and it was actually a, a friend of mine at work. I, I used to work at MF Global. Um which went bust <laughs> after I left there. But uh, I got him into gold back in around 2004. And uh, he really, yeah, he really got involved into gold. Uh, you know, I, uh, and he, he actually got this uh, book and he gave it to me, which was uh, nice of him. Uh, Diego Santos, when do you anticipate U.S. collapse? Well, do you mean the uh, dollar collapse or the, the country itself? I, I think the situation in the U.S. is not great, nor anywhere else. I think we're witnessing right now. I think a lot of uh, what's going on now is a cover for the collapse of the monetary system. Uh, they can only do that by stopping, bringing the economy to a halt. Uh, we are under administration, I think. We are told, of course, that there is something out there that is deadly and uh, we need to look after our health. And I think that's what it's all about. Um, and I think that's why it hasn't been as bad, uh, for example, in emerging... <laughs> I, I threw the book down in Billy... Uh, got startled there. I, I think that if you look at the numbers, the cases and the deaths that they've reported have been a lot worse in the United States, in the UK, and in Europe, places like Belgium. And you look at the other uh, emerging market countries like uh, in Asia, they haven't been that bad. So all the countries that have all the debt have been uh, locked down. Their economies are 
basically imploding right now, the way things are going. Will the UK go bankrupt in the next five years? Yeah, I mean, the UK is already in the process of uh, bankruptcy. That's why the pound has gone from, uh, well, over $2 in 2007 to uh, 115 earlier this year. Yeah, it's rebounded a little bit. Uh, so for bankruptcy, just, uh, just you know, look at the currency and how much you can buy with it, all the inflation. And, you know, uh, it sounds really bad. Oh, it's going to go bankrupt. Uh, the currency is going to collapse. But you look at all these countries, uh, especially like Brazil, they've got like six different currencies in there. And I lived in Brazil. Yeah, things aren't great. It's a third world country. And, and there's a lot of problems, but life still goes on. Uh, that's, that's, uh, and there are opportunities as well. So you need to be aware of this if you want to protect yourself and your family. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, that's the only thing one can do because the people in charge are so powerful uh, but hopefully they will lose a lot of power. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why I, I, I uh, do what I do. I try not to finance these people. How, how do you stop that? Well, first of all, you try to keep as little uh, as much of your uh, money or your savings in the banks because the banks are in cahoots with the politicians. They control the system. You try to uh, borrow as little from them as, as well. You try to uh, avoid depending on government and the welfare state as much as possible. I know, unfortunately, we have to pay for a lot of things through taxation, through payroll taxes and all that. Unfortunately, you can't avoid that, but you can try to uh, avoid it and be uh, self-sufficient. The other thing, don't watch television. Don't get involved in politics. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, useless uh, to uh, write to your MP or your congressman. I've written to the uh, MP a few times, and you just get a letter, and they basically ignore you, uh, your grievance. Uh, it, it's uh, the only people they listen to, the MPs and uh, congressmen or senators, or are to the big corporations who stuff their pockets with, uh, well, they call them uh, donations, but it's really uh, bribing and corruption. Uh, okay. I'll stop talking, see if I get some questions. Aria Leo, will gold price go down near term? I actually... Uh, it went down last week, of course. We had a pullback. We retested the breakout level. Uh, and uh, by the way, I think someone asked about uh, Barrett Gold because the announcement that Warren Buffett had bought into Barrett Gold came after the market closed. But I read that in the aftermarket because a lot of stocks trade in the aftermarket. Some and they trade also in the pre-market. But Friday night, uh, Barrett Gold jumped 7% higher. Let's see if I scroll back up here. Uh, general stack shift says inflation is defined as expansion of money supply. Well, I, I've uh, I agree with Peter Schiff on that one. Uh, Shane Sturges, I agree with you. Britain is living. We don't really have a government. Uh, I mean, the people uh, like Boris Johnson and uh, the people that we see publicly, they're being told what to do. Uh, you know, they're following orders from the uh, from Bill Gates. <laughs> I, I saw a photo just before I started the live stream, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. And they had the prime minister of New Zealand between them. And the prime minister of New Zealand looked like she was a schoolgirl next to them. So you can see by the body language who's giving the orders there. Uh, 
uh, can stop me. Uh, will I eventually be able to buy a medium price house with one ounce of silver? Um, I think you might need more than that. Uh, I think you, uh, I think silver could go a lot higher, but, uh, I think you might need a bit more, uh, than, uh, I think you, you could maybe with a hundred ounces, you could do a, a bit of damage if, if silver goes where, uh, some people think it might go. It depends on what country you're in as well. I don't know where you are. Uh, June 12th, 1776, Marxist Trump national government is deploying a full spectrum war assault upon America with legal and medical frauds while the monetary war is deployed. Yeah, I don't think it really matters who's in power, unfortunately. Stagflation, uh, good for gold. Yes, it is. That's what we had in the 70s. And gold and silver did well. Deflation, though, is even better for gold as well. And by deflation, I mean um, a depression of the economy. Businesses going under like they're going under now. Governments with a lot of debt. Uh, people defaulting. Why, why is gold and silver good during def a, a contraction? Well, you know, a depression. Uh, because... Not many other investments are safe, so people will put their money into gold and silver. So it does uh, well. Usually when the uh, system is unstable, you know, inflationary or depre dep depressionary, I would say, the economy. Uh, I guess if you go back to uh, 1980 and the 90s, uh, gold was stuck around uh, 300 to 500, I guess, for almost 20 years, got a little bit be below 300. So that was a period that was a, a good period for the financial monetary system. You had had the uh, Volcker, uh, you know, when interest rates went to 20% in 1980. So that was the only time that it was quite stable. We were pretty much like on a gold standard de facto back then, I would say with a wide range. Uh, John Meyer says, people expect all kinds of conditions to deteriorate soon. It always takes a little longer. I agree, yeah, things always take longer than people expect, especially with markets and the economy. You're right, that's why you need to be patient. <laughs> I've been uh, buying my uh, stacking gold and silver since 2002. So it's a long-term game. El Tomo, thank you uh, to all viewers. Stay tuned for all the great content that Mario brings. Positively change the course of our financial life. Greetings from Belgium. Uh, uh, the Democratic People's Republic of uh, Belgium, yeah. You're welcome, uh, Tomo, and thank you. Uh, Bob Roast, would you buy currencies of countries that produce gold? No. I try to avoid any uh, fiat currencies. Just because a country produces gold doesn't mean their currency is good. Look at South Africa. I don't think the rand is any good. Nor the ruble, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's another fallacy people have that they think, oh, my country doesn't have any gold. How can we go on a gold standard? But look at Switzerland. They don't have many. Um, they're not very rich in minerals, but they have a lot of gold because gold is money. So if your country produces something or provides a service in exchange for money, that you will get the gold. So, yeah, I, I think it's best right now while we are in this crisis that you stick to the physical and uh, why take the risk of lending money to a, a, another country because that's what holding a country's fiat currency is, is lending money to them. Joker Alphas, thank you for the super chat. What are the signs or indicators just before currency collapse? Well, historically, 
uh, it's been, uh, you look at the currencies like uh, in Venezuela, Brazil, Weimar, Germany, they all drop a lot versus the hard currencies like the dollar. But uh, I, I think it's the uh, rising price of gold and silver nowadays because uh, the dollar is a uh, reserve currency, but it's backed by nothing. So, yeah, keep an eye on gold and silver, and I, I think we're seeing that. And also uh, rising prices of, uh, of things that are uh, quite uh, a big necessity, like food, all the things you need to live on, all the tangibles. A lot of super chats. Thank you, guys. Uh, Monty Jones, uh, you're welcome, Monty. Can't can stop me. Uh, thank you. Have a great day, you too. John Meyer, uh, same as El Tomo from the People's Republic of the Netherlands. Yeah, the People's Monarchy of uh, Britain here, I guess, because we're not a republic. People's Monarchy or pe People's Kingdom. Could you please highlight the difference between one Federal Reserve notes and four quarter coins in the U.S.? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess that's a trick question. I guess four quarters are supposed to be uh, one U.S. dollar. I guess your trick question is that a Federal Reserve note is not a dollar, so there's no relationship between them, I would say. Bob Rose, thank you for the super chat. So I hope I answered your qu your trick question correctly about the quarters. I found uh, one of these. Uh, I think I told you guys I was clearing things under the stairs, and I found this, a half a rupee. And it says East India Company. I don't know if you can see that. And it's from 1840. So you compare that to a, a shilling. They're very similar. And it's also very similar to the quarter. So I'll show you. Where is the quarter? Well, anyway, I haven't can't find the quarter anyway. Yeah, Sakin Sashin. Yeah, he, here's a half rupee from 1840. There you go. It says East India Company. Where do you think Switzerland got all their gold? Well, Switzerland uh, wasn't a gold standard, I think, until 1936 or maybe even later. Uh, While well, they got their gold from banking from <laughs> World War II, I guess they uh, a lot of rich people put their money in Switzerland for safety. They got it also from uh, Germany, the Nazi gold, I would say. But it's not all Nazi gold. It's just that Switzerland, not many people know, Switzerland adopted a, a constitution uh, in the mid-1800s. And it was uh, pretty much like the U.S. Constitution. And uh, so it's quite a interesting country. And uh, I think up until uh, 2000, they backed their currency 20% with gold. Uh, Jim Diggs. What do you think of the double bottom in the dollar chart? Do you mean the dollar index? Uh, I'm not sure if it's a double bottom. I've said many times the dollar index is uh, probably a big distraction because the dollar index started out in March uh, 1973 at 100. And, you know, 50 years later almost, we're still near 100. The only thing that is really going up versus all the fiat currencies that are represented in the fiat uh, in the dollar index is gold and silver. So, as per the dollar index, I I've done quite a few videos about the the cycles, 
And uh, I found that uh, there's like a seven to nine year cycle in the dollar index. So, and I've said, I've been saying this for a couple of years now that uh, the uh, the high in January of 2017 at 103.82 is the high, is a cycle high, I think. We had the low in 2008, nine years, 2017. So, I think we are on a leg down that will last uh, seven to nine years. I think this year we traded back up to 103, but we never broke 103.82. But I haven't really looked uh, lately at the chart. I know it's around 93, but uh, we'll see. It could rebound a little bit because the dollar has dropped quite, quite a lot in the last uh, couple of months. Uh, Golden Gate, please give your comments and thoughts on the situation in Turkey. Uh, will this happen globally? Yeah, Turkey, I mean, I, I saw the the, head, the story. I, I didn't read the whole thing. The Zero Hedge, I think, said people are selling loads of uh, cars and uh, to buy gold and get rid of their uh, Turkish uh, lira. Well, that, that's normal when you have cur weak currencies, and Turkey has had a bad currency for, for years. I think in uh, I think they were doing kind of the same thing. They were doing the opposite in Argentina a few years ago. They're tr taking their uh, fiat uh, currency and uh, buying cars because they, they thought at least it would be worth something. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible what's happening in Turkey could be could be happening uh, here, but uh, and in the U.S. and other Western countries, and I think it would be worse. But what they're doing is um, they're using the crisis uh, that started early this year as an excuse to basically shut down the economy, so people can't really uh, do much. Uh, so that I think we are in a process of admi administration. And we're going to see a reset, and it's accelerating. A reset is a correction. And I think it's going to be reflected in the gold and silver price. I think they're going a lot higher, and all that will mean is that the paper is going to be worth a lot less. It doesn't uh, feel like that right now, but I, I, and it's difficult to say how it's going to be exactly because this has never happened before on a world scale. We've had a lot of currency collapses everywhere in different countries, but never with a major reserve currency. So I think the best thing to do is to uh, hold on to your uh, precious metals and uh, batten down the hatches. Uh, I think uh, be cautious about investing. Be cautious about traveling because uh, they can, uh, you can travel somewhere and they, they'll come out and say, oh, you can't come back anymore. If you do, you're going to have to be in quarantine. So I think it's a, a little bit of a, a time for just battening down the hatches and uh, doing whatever you need to, uh, to uh, get through this. And I think people can, we, you could prosper as well from this situation even though a lot of people aren't going to do it, and it might sound uh, a little bit uh, greedy and selfish, but uh, I don't see why it should be. If you don't hurt anyone and you just act cautiously. Yagi1, thank you for the super chat. Rob B sees the Dow Gold ratio 1 to 1 of 15,000. That's possible. We could even go uh, two to one. Uh, so gold would be uh, twice as much as the Dow. We could see, because some people are calling, uh, I saw Charles Nenner, uh, he, he was uh, on um, Atlantis report. He still sees uh, the Dow down to 5,000. So we could see gold just over 10,000. That would be two, two ounces of gold. You, you could get a, a Dow for half an ounce of gold. 
it's possible because they've uh, inflated the system. There's so much lies in terms of uh, value. You see, the prices are so crazy. <laughs> you know, the stock market, the bond markets, uh, real estate, the prices have gone so much out of uh, reality with the world that uh, whenever it unwinds, it could, it could uh, go through uh, historical levels like the Dow one-to-one. -one. It could go through that because they've kept it uh, going for so long, this uh, charade uh, where they don't want uh, corrections, uh, where they keep printing money, fiat currency, where there's no anchor. Patrick uh, Galpke, thanks for your presence. How would you be, when would be a good gold silver ratio to switch from silver to gold? Would you just write it out at this point? Uh, I, I, uh, I try to just switch out of paper. I try to, I, I don't, never really try to switch from gold or silver or vice versa, really. That's my view. But um, I think the gold-silver ratio is going to go lower than it went in 2011 as well. It's going to go through 30. We probably go back uh, to uh, 15, which is like a historical average. Uh, cheap laugh Kennedy, do you think JP Morgan, the BIS, hit, hit the medals? Maybe, uh, maybe. I mean, uh, BIS would probably use JP Morgan to hit the metals. I know BIS has an account with uh, Com uh, CME, the uh, CME exchange, which owns the COMEX. But the other thing about the uh, paper trading in the futures is that, let's say, JP Morgan, they know, for example, a key support, let's say 2000. Uh, they, they just go and uh, sell through that level and they trigger stops. And then you get like the traders, speculators and funds, they start selling. So that, that happens as well. <laughs> These uh, bullion banks and uh, people at such institutions, they're very knowledgeable about technical analysis and they're very knowledgeable. I mean, JP Morgan is probably the biggest... Uh, clearer for futures business in the world. I remember when I worked as a futures broker um, for the companies that I did. I worked for a Brit English company. I worked for Citibank. I worked for uh, ABN AMRO. And uh, the way it works is that you could have a client that uh, has an account with you, let's say with ABN AMRO futures. They clear through you the trades and they also trade execute through you, right? So every they put their money with you. Uh, you have you are a member of an exchange, and you put the trades for them. But what you had as well were clients that only traded with you, executed with you. But their main account was, for example, at J.P. Morgan. So they cleared with their J.P. Morgan. And throughout my career. Uh, there's loads of accounts like that, and mo loads of them cleared through J.P. Morgan. So J.P. Morgan, the futures people there, they know uh, where their clients have their uh, triggers, and uh, they talk. <laughs> Chuck O'Reilly, tip selling precious metals in, in the U.K., uh, eBay or coin shop. Um. Uh, I think a coin shop or uh, a dealer is better. Uh, and why is that? Well, because eBay, uh, I think there's a 10%. They take 10% on eBay, I think, for metals. And then when you get paid through PayPal, they take a cut of that. And then you have to post it. So if you want to help the channel, <laughs> uh, you, could, you can use, uh, I recommend gold investments. Um, co.uk. Uh, I've been doing business with them since 2002. It's family run. Uh, you can sell it through them or someone else. If you sell to, to them, give them my promo code. 
Monaco 64, and they'll uh, give you a better deal, hopefully. Well, they should. But, yeah, just look for bullion dealers online. Uh, there are coin shops as well that you can sell through. But the dealers uh, is probably better. Sometimes the coin and metal dealers, they, they don't really deal. Uh, they're not as liquid as the dealers. Jeff McCarthy, start measuring everything in gold or towards gold. You see we are in the deflation. Of course, of course we are. I mean, if you look at the Dow gold ratio, it was at uh, above 40 in uh, 1999, and we're now around 13, maybe a little higher. So, yeah, in, in uh, real money, we've been in a deflation. Uh, in uh, in fiat money, we've been in an inflation. Uh, Barrett Gold must be happy Warren Buffett bought so much of their stock. Well, I, I think, uh, and we have to see when the next numbers come out for the third the uh, current quarter uh he could uh, have bought more of barrack gold and he could have bought more other uh, mining companies he could have even bought the gld uh could he have bought physical gold uh for Berkshire hathaway um i'm not sure because some some companies because of the regulatory regime they can't own physical uh gold but uh, I, I think he bought uh, Barrick uh, Gold Corporation because it's basically like owning a, a gold dealer, really. A gold, um, because Barrick Gold, uh, they're, they are a, the second biggest miner. They are not an exploration company. They're not a junior miner. They have the gold. And uh, they also pay dividends, and I think Warren Buffett likes dividends. So he he probably bought more of Barrick. Uh, he caught, could have bought some more uh, bigger companies as well the last few months. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think Barrick issued new shares. Yeah, they they wouldn't have benefited from Warren Buffett buying it because you're right. If it was a rights issue, it's in the secondary market he bought shares. Lord Humongo says Warren Buffett isn't a very good investor after losing fifty billion on oil. Who loses fifty billion? Well, I mean, I think people look more at the uh, long-term value of Berkshire Hathaway. I think if you put ten thousand dollars back in the sixties when it it didn't start, Berkshire Hathaway was a, a company he bought, but. Uh, under his leadership, I mean, if you put like $10,000, it's worth millions today. So I think that's what people mean. Yes, he's he's made bad trades. Uh, I don't know how much he lost in oil if it is $50 billion. Uh, JM, what do you think of diversifying precious metals locations into other countries? Uh, do you mean like uh, storing uh, physical gold and silver in other countries? I think it's a bad idea right now <laughs> with what's happening in the world. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, politicians and governments can lock down countries. I see that Australia, you can't get out of Australia, I think, for... The rest of this year, uh, I think you can ship goods in and out of Australia. But what if they decide to say, oh, you you know, all goods uh, 
shipments are, are going to stop for the next six months. So, no, I don't think it's a very good idea right now. Unless, of course, you're a multi-billionaire and uh, you've got private jets, yachts, and you can move th things around and, and you're almost like a country. But if you're a small investor, no, I, I think you tr should try to keep it as close as possible to home. Uh, Coach K, thank you for the super chat. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Coach K. Yeah, June 12, 1776. I agree with you about Buffett. There's a photo uh, from about 15 years ago or so. There's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Warren Buffett, and Lord Jacob Rothschild standing together in one of the Rothschild's castles. So that's the kind of people uh, that he, uh, he seems very folksy, but <laughs> I think is any, anything but that. His father, though, was, uh, was a good guy. <laughs> well, from what I wrote, I think he was a good guy, what he wrote about gold. Uh, Howard Buffett, congressman from uh, Nebraska, Dr. Rinderhouse, Buffett was at my sister's wedding and an anniversary 10, 10 years later. Okay. Busy Mountain, heard anything about replacement of dollar with gold? Well, the thing about uh, fiat currencies, uh, unless we go back to a gold standard, it doesn't matter. You know, they could uh, call it the new dollar or something else, and they might not back it with gold. But uh, just the gold price going up will uh, do the job of resetting things. But I haven't heard anything about uh, <laughs> Uh, replay well the dollar anyway uh, constitutionally is a way to silver uh, you know the the coinage act of 1792 defines uh, a dollar as 371.25 uh, grains of pure silver so yeah the the term dollar really uh, is not the the paper federal reserve note even though we call it a dollar right Corey Chap Chapman, what are your thoughts on countries going to digital currency and how does it affect gold and silver prices? Uh, Corey, I think <laughs> most currencies are already uh, digital. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the, a lot of our the transactions we do are di digital already. I think what gold and silver do is uh, they, if we're not going to go back to using them as currencies, they will act as savings, in, you know, ways to preserve your wealth. Uh, you know, these uh, digital currencies, or they're just good, good for uh, transactions, but it uh, doesn't mean that they're good for uh, storing wealth or preserving wealth. So I think there will always be a place for gold and silver. And if they try to fool people into thinking that a, a Fed coin or a digital dollar is better than what we have now. Well, a lot of people might fall fall for it, but I won't. <laughs> uh, John Cope, yes, your cash can be uh, bailed in, as they call it. Yeah, I don't think the uh, C, you know, is it the FDIC? They only have like uh, three to four percent of the. Uh, you know, insurance that they supposedly cover, they only have like a, a three to four percent in assets to cover all that. So, if it, there was a systemic crisis, they uh, the FDIC would be uh, completely uh, useless, and uh, there would be bail ins like they had in Cyprus years ago, five, well, I think 10 years ago.
Uh, v. Bjorn uh, Gritten, I do think housing is a way to store wealth. Yeah. Housing and land. It's not liquid, of course, but, uh, you know, um, I, I'll give you a, a story about uh, one of my uncles in Brazil. Some of you might have heard it. This was back in 87, I think, is one of, one, one of the Brazilian currencies collapsed. He, he had just bought um, a house to, uh, for his medical practice. He bought someone's house. So he, the, the deal went through. He completed on, the, on X date, and the guy got paid by my uncle. And the next day, you had the, the whole system implode. And they brought out a new currency. And everyone that had a Brazilian currency in the bank the day before, that money became worth maybe a tenth of what it was. It was worthless. So my uncle was very lucky. He, he, he got this property the day before. If he had held that cash, if he hadn't completed when he did. So I think housing is uh, a good uh, defense against the currency collapse, land as well. As I've said before, anything tangible. But gold and silver, of course, are illiquid, which means they're very marketable. You can exchange them very easily. Houses are more difficult. That's right. Uh, Jim Diggs, <laughs> usually it's an hour. But I see there's quite a few people here, 701. This is a pretty good uh, live stream, quite a bit of interest. Yeah, gold is easier to conceal than real estate. It's true, but I read a story as well about Germany um, that um, a lot of people during the war, World War II, they put the deeds, especially in East Germany, Eastern Germany, they they buried the deeds uh, underneath the, the the front porch of their houses. They concreted it. So I think there was a story about uh, this family after the Berlin Wall fell. They went back to where their house used to be, and they dug up the uh, the front of the house and they took out the uh, the deeds of the house and they got the house back. So I guess. Nothing is really safe um, through time, but you do your best. Uh, JM, thank you. Thank you. George Assad, what is the ultimate investment, Nestle and Coca-Cola? Well, I think uh, alcoholic uh, beverages, liquor companies are good too. Uh, tobacco, <laughs> all the vice uh, companies, I think, probably will always be around, unfortunately. Uh, John Cope, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think I answered that question about five minutes ago. They can't take your cash to the bank. It's called a bail-in. <laughs> So they, they take all the depositors' money to bail themselves out. Pabar, uh, thank you for the feedback. Georgia said, I've heard about diamonds, that they're a lot more abundant. Yeah, but people still seem to... Uh, value them you got to be careful that it's not cubic uh, zirconium cz <laughs> uh dmc about satoshi nakamoto bitcoin yeah i have a problem with something that's been created by someone that we don't even know even though the you know the uh White paper and everything is pretty, pretty good. As I've said before, uh, I do have some cryptocurrencies. I know how to deal in cryptocurrencies. 
but uh, I don't put uh, all my eggs in that uh, crypto basket. I think you can have a small amount, and it's very speculative. Yeah, the thing with diamonds, if you're going to get involved, you need to have an expert look at it before you buy it. My, my dad, uh, back in the 80s, uh, he uh, was approached by a Russian guy who uh, wanted to sell him icons, Russian icons. They're quite, they can be quite va valuable, and my dad didn't know much about them, and he was interested. He liked them. But before he bought them, uh, he, he got uh, an expert to look at it. And the guy came to our house and he looked at them. He went fake, 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 fake. So uh, I don't, the Russian guy was like a good friend of my dad. Hadn't been for that long, but I don't think he was a friend anymore after that. So you always need to check these uh, things like uh, the diamonds and antiques, make sure that they're uh, legitimate. But it will cost you to get an expert to look at it. But uh, it was worth it for my dad because uh, he didn't go, you know, he didn't buy the fake fake stuff. Yeah, Billy's here. He's on the floor. He's asleep on the floor. West Coast. I've started seeing more and more people here in Scotland selling silver due, due to hardship. Hopefully it isn't the edge. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of people selling gold uh, after the 08 crisis it was cash for gold. And I think, uh, unfortunately, I don't think people have as much jewelry and gold or silver as they did maybe five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, Lily Robin, there is fake gold. You need to be careful. Uh, that's why I only use uh, reputable dealers, people that I know. Uh, concept quad two, yeah. Bank run in the UK. You know, I think um, the the way they're uh, avoiding this right now is that they're doing all the money printing, all the QE by the Bank of England, all the programs. So maybe there won't be a bank run again in the UK. There could be a bail in. So. And the other uh, thing that is happening, we're going to see the currency get devalued even more because the only way to keep the banks from having a bank run is that the Bank of England has to uh, continue to create reserves out of thin air and lend those reserves for nothing to the banks so the banks can keep paying people. And uh, I think they're trying to uh, get us into a cashless society or cashless, uh, even though I think it's going to be hard here in the UK, it's going to be a while. So it will be difficult to have bank runs when it goes cashless. But you could get your money out and buy gold and silver when it goes cashless. Uh, Victor Claudio, yeah, cash for gold is a subtle way of conf confiscation. All right, uh, I'll take uh, one or two more questions and then we'll uh, call it a day. I'm waiting for the questions. <laughs> Uh, will Buffett's latest move have an effect on gold price? Well, from what I read uh, this weekend, 
Uh, Barrick Gold uh, went up 7% in the aftermarket because the announcement was made after the market closed. But we'll have to see if it will uh, move gold higher. It could, it could probably could. It could move the mining mining stocks particularly higher, and that doesn't necessarily mean the bullion will move higher. But we'll see. Uh, Bob Roast, thank you again for your uh, donation. Um, do you think we'll see thirty in silver this week? It's very possible. I mean, silver is moving two, three dollars a day. Okay, uh, thank you everyone uh, for your uh, engagement <laughs> and uh, in the live stream and all your support. And I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.